Hey everybody, this is Emily with Snake Discovery and get ready for an intense video because today we're going to be talking all about thermostats. Today we are going to be testing three of the most commonly used brands of heavy duty thermostats, common as in, in our experience. I know that there's other brands out there that maybe we'll test in another video, but for the sake of today's video, we're just going to be testing three brands and comparing them against one another to determine in our opinion which one is the best. The three brands we'll be comparing today are the Herpstat 2, the Vivarium Electronics or VE 300 by 2, and finally the newest to market for these three, the Freedom Breeder 120 by 2. The reason why we chose these models is because they all have two probes, so they are the most comparable to one another. However, they do come in different sizes for each of these brands. For example, the VE model we're using today is their higher end model because it comes with two probes. They also have another Another model that comes with just a single probe. The FB or Freedom Breeder model we're using today is kind of their middle of the line model. It comes with two probes of course just like everything else in today's video but they also have a one probe option or a four probe option. And then finally the Herpstat comes in a one, two, four, or six probe option which is just crazy to think of a thermostat that has six probes. But Herpstat has one. In case you haven't put it together yet because I did it for the longest time, the number number at the end of the model is how many probes it has. First let me explain how the three different methods of thermostat can work. First there is on off mode, that was pretty easy, we'll get to that one in a second. Second there is the pulse proportional and third and finally there is the dimmable proportional. To most easily illustrate these three methods for you, instead of using a heat mat to show you how they work, we're going to use a heat lamp because the light will turn on when the thermostat is supplying power to the heating element, which is going to be in the form of a light, whereas in a heat mat, it's kind of hard to see when a heat mat is on. So the on-off mode is the easiest uh, kind of method or easiest concept in terms of thermostats. Basically in on-off mode, if the probe isn't warm enough, then it turns the heating element on to full power. And then when the probe reaches the temperature that you set it at, it turns off that heating element. And then when the probe, I'm trying to cool it off here, when it cools down below the temperature that you've programmed, it turns the heating element back on again and it goes on and off and on and off basically. So using the on off mode with a thermostat is not something you want to use in conjunction with a light or anything that emits light because it's just going to turn that light on and off throughout the day. A great example of an on-off mode thermostat is just a jump start thermostat. And these work great for non-light emitting heat elements like heat mats for our snake racks. So basically what this does is once the temperature reaches two degrees below your programmed set temperature, then it turns on the heating element. And when it reaches two degrees above that set temperature, then it turns off the heating element. So again, you wouldn't want to use this for a light bulb because it's going to turn on and off throughout the day. But for heat mats and heat emitters, things that don't emit any light at all. It works great and it's just going to fluctuate four total degrees throughout the day. Now there are some places that we've read that say that a four degree fluctuation is going to be like a roller coaster ride for reptiles, but if you think of in the wild how much the temperature fluctuates naturally, four degrees is not going to be detrimental to them at all. I could see maybe in an incubator setting when you need eggs to be a specific temperature for say 55 days, that could be an issue. But for just a normal reptile's day-to-day -day life, this could work just fine. The second way in which thermostats can function is called pulse proportional, which means the thermostat sends pulses of energy to the heating element in quick succession to control the temperature. So let me show you kind of how that works. We've got our probe here at room temperature. It's going to send pulses of energy to our heating element, this lamp, if I turn it on, and what it'll do is it'll light up and it'll actually increase the brightness as it increases the strength of every pulse. It creates stronger pulses or sends more voltage in each pulse and the duration of the pulse can also be extended to warm up the probe. So as you can see, this is another one you probably don't want to use for lights because this would be very annoying to have in like a bedroom or any situation. And it's going to be confusing to the reptile too if their light is constantly turning on and off. However, for again, non-light emitting heating elements like heat emitters or heat mats, it works great. 
In addition, this mode is also not very good for the bulb because turning a bulb on and off this frequently or this much, it's gonna probably cause it to burn out quickly. And finally, you have dimming proportional, which means the thermostat sends a constant stream of energy to the heating element. However, it controls the um, voltage that is being sent to it, and it's very similar to like a dimming light bulb. And it'll increase that voltage until the probe reaches the set temperature. Oh, yep. It's just sending a little bit over and it'll slowly get brighter and brighter until it's at that desired temperature. So this is what they recommend for heating lamps. And once it reaches that temperature, it'll maintain that same brightness or it'll continue sending the same amount of voltage to that light bulb with some maybe slight variations when the probe gets a little too warm or a little too cold, but it'll stay pretty much the same. The dimming proportional also works for halogen bulbs, by the way. We just tested it out and it seems to be working quite well. However, it is not recommended for mercury vapor bulbs or for compact fluorescence, so your UVB lights. But honestly, if you're needing UVB for your reptile, you don't want to dim that down at all anyway, so just plug them right into the wall. Okay, so now what do all of these brands have to offer in terms of their modes? Well, all three of them actually have the pulse proportional mode, and it's the Herbstat that has the dimmable proportional mode as well. But these two, it seems like they all have two modes that they can offer. These two, the VE and the Freedom Breeder, have pulse proportional and the on-off mode. So the modes do make them slightly different, or at least these two different from the Herbstat. But they have a lot of other things actually in common. All three of these come with two probes and two ports, of course, one for each of these probes. They also come with built-in night drop capability, which means you can program them to decrease the temperature overnight. They also all come with an internal battery that saves your preferences or your settings in case you have a power outage. You can also find setup videos for all three of these brands. We were able to find official videos made by the companies for Herbstat and for the Freedom Breeder one. We couldn't find a VE like certified setup video, but there are plenty of setup videos for this brand that you can just find online. That's what they all have in common. So now what makes them different? One very minor difference that I just wanna point out quickly is that the probe length of the Herbstat is 12 feet long, whereas the probes for the VE and Freedom Breeder are 10 feet long. It's not that big of a difference, but just something to point out. And I should also point out that none of these are sponsors. We just wanted to compare them all today. Another difference is that the Herbstat and the Freedom Breeder have a jack that's just a basic three millimeter jack for their probes, whereas the VE uses a jack, it's actually like a, a phone line, which we found also kind of interesting. But the nice thing about all three of them is they all sell replaceable probes, and they range from like 17 to $20 each, so they're really not terribly expensive, but you do have to make sure that you buy the same brand of probe for your thermostat, because we tried using this Freedom Breeder probe in the Herbstat, because it's the same type of jack, and it did not work at all. It just kept on beeping at us with an error code so make sure you buy the right brand of replacement probe. Okay one more difference we found in the probes was actually what the probes are made of themselves. The Herbstat has a pretty nice metal tipped probe here, the VE has a plastic probe, and the Freedom Breeder has another metal tipped probe. I personally think the metal tipped ones are more accurate but that could just me be me being biased because I've always used metal probes but I'm sure they all work relatively well. We're just going to be testing them actually pretty soon here. Next, let's look at the wattage or the output that these guys have. The Herbstat and the VE thermostat have a 900 watt load or capacity, whereas the Freedom Breeder thermostat has a 1200 watt load. So the Freedom Breeder thermostat can handle considerably more than the other two. But if you think about it, 900 watts is a lot to work with, especially when the largest of like Zoomed heat mats is only 24, where is it, 24 watts. So that would handle a lot in and of itself. But if you do need the extra capacity, then Freedom Breeders does go up to 1200 watts. Another difference between these three is how they store their information. The Herbstat and VE thermostats actually save the history of the temperatures recorded on these devices. And you can go into them, into these screens here, and you can look back at previous temperatures that were recorded. The Freedom Breeder unfortunately does not offer that option. I mean, I don't know how often you're gonna be checking the history of your temperatures, but it's just something to keep in mind. Another thing to know is the Fahrenheit versus Celsius readings that these guys have. VE and Freedom Breeder only display the temperature in Fahrenheit, whereas Herbstat displays it in both Fahrenheit and Celsius. 
Next, if you look closely at the design of the VE and the Freedom Breeder thermostats, they are built to stack on top of one another. Whereas the Herbstat does not have any foot pegs or anything that fits inside kind of like the uh, VE does, it's not built to stack, but I mean it does have a flat top and a flat base with little feet, so you could still technically stack it. So again, the modes that all three of these offer, just as a quick refresher, is the Freedom Breeder can do the pulse proportional or the on-off mode. Same thing with the VE, and the Herbstat is the dimmable proportional... Ugh. And the Herbstat can do either the pulse proportional or the dimmer propor... Okay, I can't say the word proportional tonight, so from here on forward for the rest of this video, I'm just going to refer to it as pulse and dimming, okay? Anyway, Herbstat does pulse and dimming. Now I know I said earlier that the pulse mode and the on-off mode are not good for heat lamps or anything that emits light. Well, the Herbstat, since it has the dimming feature, this can work with lights because you just set the probe underneath and it dims it to the appropriate level and then it just maintains that temperature. The VE really doesn't have a good option for lights or heat lamps, but the Freedom Breeder does, surprisingly. It actually has its own light mode and Herbstat also has a light mode. Not that it really needs it because you can just make it work with the dimming feature, but they both have a light mode where basically you control the percentage of light or you control how bright the light is in the day and at night. You can choose it to be 80% bright during the day and 10% on, I guess, at night. And you can also choose when day and night starts. Not only does Herbstat, like Freedom Breeder, have a light mode, Herbstat can also control and maintain the humidity in your enclosure. Now, just like any device you want the thermostat to control, you have to plug the device into the back of it so it can have power over it, basically. So if you're going to use a Herbstat for humidity control, the device that's going to control, whether it be a fogger or like a misting system, whatever it is, will have to plug into the other probe, which means you can't use this for another heating element. Unless you have a bigger Herbstat that has maybe six ports or six um, outlets in the back of it. But just know that you'll be sacrificing one of these plugins for your humidity system. There are three different methods or modes in which the Herbstat can control your enclosures humidity. There is the scheduled, the sensed, and the hybrid mode. The scheduled mode is when you program the thermostat here to actually turn on your mister or your fogger at certain points during the day. The sensed mode is when the thermostat just turns on your misting or fogging system when it senses that it's too dry in the environment. But in order to do that, you do need a special humidity probe, of course, for it to measure the humidity levels in the environment. This probe, uh, we don't have one, but it apparently costs about $55, I think, but we can't find it on their website, although they do apparently sell it somewhere. I just don't know where. You also need that probe for the hybrid, the third mode for the humidity control. The hybrid mode basically is a combination of the sensed and the scheduled modes. Basically it'll turn on during certain points of day that you have programmed into the thermostat and if it senses that it's too dry it'll turn on again as well. So out of these three thermostats the Herbstat is the only one that not only can control the temperature of the enclosure but also the humidity levels which I think is really cool. Okay, I know that was a ton of information and it's been tough and confusing for us as well researching all of this. It's it's been about six hours since we started this project or this video. So I think we should take a break from all of the statistics from all these and let's do some testing to see how accurate they are. To do this, we're just going to use one probe, oops, one probe from each of the thermostats. I mean, with our rack, man, this is, oh, that's right, this one's 12 that's feet. 12, <laughs> yeah, that's the long probe. Um, we're going to be using both probes for all of our racks that we have these set up with after we're done filming this video. But for the sake of this video, we're just going to use a single probe to keep things a little easier. For this experiment, we're just going to take each thermostat one at a time and set it to 90 degrees. Place its probe on, we'll say on the back of this iguana on the, on the ZoomEd logo. And then basically just see what temperature it raises it to and maintains it at. And just basically see how accurate it is. To keep everything the same between all three thermostats, we're going to be using the pulse controller, pulse proportional mode, which I can't say tonight, um, since they all offer that, and then we can see how they all compare with one another. Let's start with Herbstat. So it's been sitting for about a minute, and as you can see, it has 100% of the voltage uh, capacity being pushed into the heat mat right now. The second probe is, doesn't have anything plugged into it, so it's disabled and at 0%, and currently it's claiming that the heat mat is at 74 degrees.
So right now, this thermostat says the heat mat is now at 89 degrees, and it's kind of maintaining right at 89 degrees exactly. This thermometer says it's at 90 degrees exactly. So I'd say that's pretty accurate, just one degree of a difference for the herp stat. Spoiler alert, we've actually been using all three of these thermostats for a couple of months now, just to play around with them and get familiarized with them, and they all maintain a steady temperature very well. With all three of them, you can program the very temperature so basically what range it keeps the probe at so we're just gonna do a quick test here today and it looks like the herpstat is just one degree off of what this alcohol thermometer says so let's go ahead and try the VE so interesting random note for the VE when you're scrolling through the options on the menu it doesn't matter if you press up or down it scrolls through them all in the same order you'd think if you go up it goes in one direction down in the other but nope it doesn't matter which arrow you press so what you're seeing here on the screen is pretty close to what time it is right now, and the set point for probe 1 is set to 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, this does not show Celsius at all, which is kind of too bad, but whatever. And currently, probe number 1 is at 79 degrees, so we're going to wait until it gets to about 90, and then measure the temperature to see how accurate it is. Another interesting thing about the VE is while we were researching today for this video, their website is down. It brings you to an error page saying you're, apparently their bandwidth limit has been exceeded. So this made it kind of difficult to research their product. We think there might just be a limit to how much traffic can hit their website before it shuts down until the following month. Okay, let's see the results of the VE thermostat. And you can actually see the pulsing happening right now. This is that pulse proportional mode where it just sends pulses of energy to the heat source, which is this heat mat. So it says it's at 90 degrees. Let's see how close that is. It is at 91 degrees. So again, just one degree of a difference. That's pretty cool. That's very accurate. Yeah, I wonder if it's the thermometer at this point. Yeah, it might just be the thermometer. Well, only one way to find out. Let's test Freedom Breeder. I will say I like the screen of the Freedom Breeder thermostat because it shows a lot more information, like what's currently running, what it's thinking at the moment. It just displays a lot more information than the other two. It's a little harder to program. There is a learning oh. curve to this one. The VE and the Herpstat are pretty straightforward when it comes to programming them, and Freedom Breeder does take a little bit more time to set up, but thankfully it has a really good setup video like on their YouTube channel, which, is, which was very helpful when we were setting ours up for the first time. All right, here we go. This is the Freedom Breeder thermostat. It's reading 90.3 90 degrees. It is at 90 exactly. Wow. Mm. So that one seems to be the most accurate, uh, according to this thermometer. According to this cheap setup that we have, which is <laughs> not accurate at all. <laughs> right, exactly. But, I mean, it's still impressive. That's pretty cool. But overall, all three of them were very accurate. Yeah, because now it's only saying 98. Oh, yeah, now it's 89. And this is still showing. Oh, this is actually, yeah, it's still 90. Yeah. Okay, so they're all pretty much the same. Yeah, like we thought, they're all pretty much exactly the same as what we thought. Yep. <laughs> you can drop the camera. No. Now, of course, something to really research and consider when choosing the right thermostat are its safety features. So we did some researching for you to discover the best safety features that are included in all three of these brands. And we discovered that the Herbstat has a really neat feature in which you have to enter a four-digit passcode in order to access the programmability of the unit. So if you have kids, this passcode would prevent them from accidentally increasing the temperature to like 120 degrees. And when we were talking to the rep at the Tinley show we bought the Herbstat thermostat from, he said that they are currently trying to get the Herbstat able to work with wireless devices, which means that you could check, say on an app on your phone, the temperature of the racks at your house, which would be a really cool feature to see in the future. This would also enable the thermostat to maybe send an alert to your phone if the temperatures get too high. It doesn't have have those features right now, but it sounds like it's something Herpstat is working on for future models, which is really exciting. Now the most important feature a thermostat should have is what it does if something were to malfunction. Say one of the electronic components caused it to start overheating. The Herpstat has a safety shutoff relay, which means it will override everything and shut down the entire unit if it reaches a certain temperature. And that got us thinking, does the VE or the Freedom Breeder thermostat have that too? And we couldn't find a good solid answer online so we decided to void our warranties on our units and open them up and see if we could find a safety relay inside. 
This is the Herpstat 2. You can try to keep the box right there. Um, this is the safety shutoff relay, so there's that one. And then moving on to the VE, we did find their safety shutoff right here. That's that relay. And then in the Freedom Breeder uh, thermostat, the relay, actually there's two relays in this one we discovered. There's one for each port. So they do in fact all have safety shutoff relays. So in addition to the safety relay that all of these models have, they also have a high-low alarm, which means that based on the temperature that you program into the thermostat, it'll beep at you. It'll actually make an alarm if the probe gets too hot or too cold. And the last thing we would like to compare these all between is their price and their warranty. The prices on all three of these brands are surprisingly close to one another. The Herpstat is $195 online, but if you pick this up at a reptile show, we have seen that almost actually every reptile show that these have been for sale, they're always 10% off, which brings it down to $176 is actually what we bought ours for at the last Tinley show. The VE is $195 as well online. However, it does not seem to go on sale at reptile shows. The Freedom Breeder thermostat is $175 online. So basically, if you're at a reptile show, the Freedom Breeder and Herpstat are gonna be essentially the same price. The warranty for the Herpstat is a one year limited warranty where you send them the broken thermostat and they check it out and if they determine that it was a manufacturer issue, then they will fix it and then send you your unit back, but functional once again. However, if it was your fault that the thermostat is no longer working, like you spilled water on it or you dropped it and it broke, then the, the warranty is void. For the VE thermostat, they actually offer a limited lifetime warranty. Now again, if it's shown that it was your fault that it doesn't work anymore, they won't cover any repairs, but if it was a manufacturer issue, then for the lifetime of the thermostat, they will take it back and fix it and send it back to you again. And finally, for the Freedom Breeder thermostat, again, it has to be proven that it was the manufacturer's fault that it doesn't work, but if that's the case, then they will actually send you a brand new thermostat and then you'll send them the defective one. And now for our final opinion on what we believe to be the best thermostat. Honestly, it depends on what you need from a thermostat. If you need a device to measure not only your temperature, which all three of these are great and very accurate at, we discovered today, but you also need it to measure the humidity levels, then the Herpstat is your best option. Between the VE and the Herpstat, which are at the same price point online anyway, the Herpstat has a lot more to offer. It controls the humidity, it has the dimmable feature, and so on. But if you don't need the dimmable feature or the humidity control, then consider the Freedom Breeder in our opinion because not only is this one just as good of a thermostat as the VE but it also saves you 20 bucks. So from our subjective standpoint we don't see any reason to go with the VE because of its high price point and low functionality overall compared to the other two brands but we know many people who have used VEs for many years and they swear by them they love them so continue doing your research guys and don't just use our opinion to make your final decision we'll be using all three of them for our rack systems because they're all good reliable thermostats when it comes to temperature control thank you everybody for watching today's video and of course thank you to the patreon supporters for backing this channel it was your funds that allowed us to test these and actually crack them open and void our warranties but actually learn as much as possible so we could come up with the most well-rounded video for you today if you liked today's video and want to see us compare more th brands of thermostats since there are more out there please let us know in the comments below and maybe we'll do another round of different brands of thermostats in the future thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time another difference is that the herpstat and the freedom breeder have kind of a three millimeter meter meteor and the herpstat can do either the pulse proportional or the dimmer propor herpstat is the dimmable proportional do you just want to start calling them pulse and dimming pulse and dimming yeah yeah okay let's do that and then when you include light light herpstat can also control and maintain your humidity humidity and compare more brands of thermostats please let us know uh, so that was for the Herpstat. It was just one degree of a difference. And again, that's just from our quick, just, yeah. Now for the humidity mode using the Herm, Hermostat. Oh my God.